Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to talk about some of the ways that you can treat your body, your food, your water, and your soil if any of those things have been contaminated with dioxin or PCBs. Stay tuned. So, I had a lot of information on this subject in my channel, but the, the information was kind of all over the place. So what I decided to do was go ahead and delete all those videos and really consolidate them into one succinct video with as much information packed in that single video as I can get in it. So that's this video, okay? There's going to be a link to this information in the description box below it's going to take you to archive.org i created a single page document that you can refer to you can print it out it's free you can hand it out it's got source links in that document that you can refer to the studies that i am talking about in this video that being said i'm not a chemist I am not a doctor. I am just a guy that has a particular interest in this topic here. Okay, I'm an investigative journalist and I've been interested in this topic for about three to four years and I've been trying to blow the lid off of this topic and warn people about it and help get people prepared for it. Okay, I'm a prepper at heart. All right, and so I am personally myself prepping for a mass release of dioxins and PCBs. That is one of the things that I have been prepping for for a very long time. So I'm going to go ahead and just give you a quick breakdown of what, some of the ways that the average person can respond to this type of event. So let's talk about it. <clears throat> Number one, treating your body or rather detoxing from dioxin. <clears throat> The two most promising methods to treat your body if you've been exposed to dioxin is with chlorophyll and xanthohumol. <clears throat> chlorophyll is found in chlorella. All right? It is a commercial product that you can buy. It's in pill form and powder form. And what it does is <clears throat> if you take the chlorella before or after your meal, it'll help or absorb the dioxin in your stomach and excrete it from your intestines. <clears throat> it's also thought, they haven't verified this yet, they still need to do more studies, <clears throat> but it is also believed that chlorophyll <clears throat> can help your cells inside your body detox from dioxin as well. <clears throat> so chlorophyll in the form of chlorella. Now, another substance called xanthohumol, <clears throat> which is found in hops, helps to protect your DNA and potentially reverse the damage that is associated with dioxin exposure. Now, the thing you got to understand about dioxin is that when it gets in your body, it destroys your DNA's ability to replicate. It destroys your immune system it causes all kinds of reproductive issues and genetic disorders it's responsible for something called wasting disease so it needless to say it's a it's a really bad substance and if you've seen any of the images that came out of vietnam uh post 60s and 70s you can see you can take a look at the genetic disorders that happened in the children whose parents were exposed to this substance. You know, Agent Orange was a dioxin, and, and it just destroys not only the soil, not only the fish in the environment and, and the animals that eat the grass, but also the people that eat the animals that eat the grass and that drink the water, right? So it's very important to have this information. That's why I created that single page PDF that document, I put it on archive.org for you to refer to it. Now, 
let's go ahead and talk about treating your food. If your food has been exposed to these uh, substances. Now, when trying to get rid of dioxin or extract it from anything, what you got to understand are these two simple points, okay? Dioxin is hydrophobic. What that means is it does not have an affinity for water. It doesn't readily dissolve in water, okay? But it does readily dissolve or absorb into other solvents like oils, like vegetable oils, and ethanol. Okay, so you can use that information to your advantage. So when treating your food, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cut your food up real thin or mush it or blend it up, and then you're going to want to wash it with oil, like, like vegetable oils, or ethanol. Really, I, I would probably prefer the oil method because the oil, like olive oil and sunflower oil are the two most promising methods. They're the two best to use and they do a very good job at extracting the dioxins and PCBs. And now once you, once you wash the food with the, uh, with the oils, what you can do is you can put all of it in uh, you put the food and the oil inside of like distilled water and what that will do is the it'll cause the oil to rise to the surface of the water and then you can take a syringe and suction out all of the oil off the top of the water you can treat the oil and then reuse it so if you want to reuse the oil you can run it through an activated filter an activated carbon filter and the activated carbon will absorb some of the dioxin that's, well, quite a bit of the dioxin that's in the olive oil or the sunflower oil, and you can reuse it again. You're not going to be able to reuse it indefinitely, but, you know, you'll be able to get away with maybe, you know, two or three more uses uh, before you need to discard that, um, that olive oil or sunflower oil or whatever. Now, that being said, you know, you're going to have to discard the oil and the ethanol. And the, before you just throw it back in the environment with all that dioxin in it, you, you want to try to break down some of those dioxins and PCBs if you can. One of the ways to do it is just by setting it out in the sun on like a, a, like a, like a flat surface, not letting it get on in the soil, but you, you just let, let the solar radiation break it down uh, break break the dioxins and PCBs down inside of the oil itself. It's going to take a few weeks for that to occur, uh, but it's it's much better than just throwing it out on say the dirt. You know, I, if if you're using oil, I would probably, you know, personally, um, I'm not saying this is the best way to do it. I'm just saying this is the most expedient way to do it. I would personally probably just get a piece of particle board or plywood or whatever and just dump my used oil on there and set it out set it out in the sun let it let it uh let the uv radiation from the sun degrade it over time and if it's going to rain if you see that it's about to rain um you know pull that pull that board um underneath something so it doesn't so it doesn't get rained on and the the dioxins and pcbs don't don't leak out so <clears throat> anyways you know these methods are just expedient methods uh, to use if, if all hell's broke loose. We're not talking about like you know infrastructure is still in place, the government's still around that can help, or they're doing anything to help. You know if somebody's do, you know helping you out, take take that help, right? Because it's a very serious situation. But if all hell's broke loose, you got no other option. These are your options. Okay, so we talked about treating your body. We talked about treating your food. Uh, you can also use a UV lamp. If you don't want to toss it outside, you can put a UV lamp to the olive oil or to the ethanol, and it'll break down the dioxins and PCBs uh, much quicker than the sun would do that. And it, it'll take, you know, about four four days to a week for it, for it to break, like fully break everything down, and then you can just discard it. 
But if you're going to use the UV lamp, once once you've decided to use the UV lamp on your oil, like that's it for your oil. Your oil, your oil's done. So okay, let's go ahead and talk about water filtration. Now, really, the only method uh, that I would recommend for for water treatment is reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis will filter out all the dioxins and PCBs um, down down to the level to where you, you can consume it. Uh, however, the reverse osmosis is going to create a toxic wastewater that you've got to do something with. You've got to treat it, right? Now, one of the ways to treat, it's going to be full of dioxins and PCBs. So one of the ways you can treat it is by attempting to assist the oxidation process. And what you want to do is you want to put ferrous oxide in that solution and stir it up, right? Now, you don't want to touch this stuff with your hands. So when you're doing all of this, make sure you're wearing, you know, rubber gloves. Um, so go ahead and stir that ferrous oxide in there and then put a, put a UV lamp over it. That ferrous oxide and the UV lamp is going to help Oxidize, it's going to help break down those chlorine molecules inside of the toxic wastewater, right? And then after you've ozonated it for a few days, uh, with that, or no, I'm sorry, you can also use an ozone generator and ferrous oxide as well. But the UV lamp is going to be a cheaper way to do it. But once you've uh, broke, once you've had the UV lamp on it with the ferrous oxide in there, Fe2 for several days then what what i would do is toss it out in like a a, a long a, a real long trough and let, let it sit out in the sun that way the uv radiation from the sun can continue to break down the dioxins and pcbs while it's outside um, and then the water will evaporate and what you'll be left with is uh, mostly mostly broken down byproducts of the dioxins and PCBs. And then, uh, you know, eventually you're going to want to get rid of that trough uh, in, a, in, a, in a facility that is, is built to handle that kind of stuff. But that is just one way to treat your water if it's been contaminated with dioxin. If you don't have a reverse osmosis filter to deal with the water, and you've got no other option, you can't stay away from the water, you need something to drink, and you, you've, you've, you've just, you've got to have something to drink, then you can use activated carbon uh, to, to filter uh, some of the dioxin and PCBs out. It's not gonna get everything out, but it's going to get some of it out. Now, I, I personally would probably run that water through the filter a couple times, what before before I drank it uh, and I and I would be trying to get out of that area and find a, a place that has potable water right because that's first and foremost you know if, if you don't have potable water you're only gonna last a couple days so you know if you have to you know use the water that is contaminated and you don't have reverse osmosis but you have an activated carbon filter you might be able to make do with that activated carbon filter, depending on the severity of the contamination. Uh, but that being said, like I said, you're going to want to run it through the activated carbon uh, uh, at least a few times. And then what you could do is you could use a UV lamp to try and break down any of the dioxins and PCBs that made it through the filter and into the and, and still into the water, right? Uh, the, the UV lamp is, is, is going to suffice after about, you know, two or three days of shining the UV lamp through the water. Like, I, I would be more comfortable drinking the water after that. But if you're just using solar radiation to try to break it down in the water, it's, it's going to take like a few months. Okay, so that it's just not going to work. So I, I would, I would uh, not, not quick enough. For, for you to, you know, have water to drink. So I, you know, like I said, I would recommend you go ahead and get yourself one of those tabletop reverse osmosis systems and make sure that you have some kind of solar powered uh, battery pack 
solar power generator uh, that you can use to run that reverse osmosis system no matter what happens, even if the, even if the power gets cut off. Um, all right, so we've talked about water. Uh, okay, yeah, and, and distillation. You know, most people would think distillation will work. It, it will not work in this situation. Why is that? Because dioxins, a lot of them are, a lot of the chemicals are volatile. What that means is it will this, it, it will go up into the steam while you are distilling the water and it'll just be put right back into the container that you're catching the distillate in. Okay, so if you try to distill the water, it's just going to go right back into the, uh, you know, your container. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go right back into it unless you have an activated carbon filter at the end of the distiller. So there's that and then what else is there? Uh, ceramic filters. Okay, so ceramic filters will not work at all in this instance. So don't don't even don't even try. Now there's there's uh, one company that makes uh, emergency radiological uh, water filter bottle called Seichels or Seichels. It's like S E Y C H E L L E S something like that. Seichels Advanced Radiation Filtration Bottle. They claim to be able to filter out PCBs and glyphosate, which are dioxins. So if that claim is true, then, then that, that water bottle filter uh, will suffice, suffice in an emergency. But you don't want to rely on it for an extended amount of time. You, you, you want to use it only in an emergency and use it to assist you to get to another location. Like that's that should be the main priority here, right? If your water's contaminated with this stuff, you really ought to be going somewhere else where the water's not contaminated. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and move to uh, soil treatment. Uh, what you can do to treat your soil if like you're a farmer, okay, and your soil's been contaminated on a, on a large scale. Now, first and foremost, what you're gonna wanna do is get your, get, get your soil tested. Sorry about the sun in the background there. You're going to want to get your sun, or I mean, you're going to want to get your soil tested. Now, one of the labs that you can send it to will be Pace Labs. That's P-A-C-E Labs, Pace Labs. Send it to them, get it tested for dioxin PCBs. If there's no problem, great, you ain't got to do anything. Uh, but if there is a problem and you ain't got the money or there's, there's no one with the expertise to help you out, uh, because everybody's too busy helping out other people, some of the things that you can do are as follows you can uh, mo most of the methods of dealing with this uh, require so soil washing okay so you're gonna have to take up the top soil uh, mix it up with ethanol or olive oil and then set it out on tarps real thin you're, you're gonna want to lay it out lay the soil out real thin and, and you know recatch the oil recatch the ethanol so you can use it again but you, you lay it out real thin on tarps and put it underneath UV lamps, like in, in a in a barn or in a, in a warehouse, if, if you've got that ability. And then the UV lamps, it'll take a few days, maybe about three or four days, to break down the dioxins and PCBs inside of the soil. And so what happens is when the dioxins and PCBs get on the soil, uh, they tend to bind to the organic matter and so you really you need to use a solvent to extract the PCBs from the organic matter in the soil and bring them up to the surface so that the UV uh, irradiation can break down the, the, the substances now if you don't have the UV lamps you can lay it out under the Sun but it's going to take about it's going to take about a month to two months to really break it down to significant amounts. After after about a month of sitting out in the sun, about 50% of it will get broken down. You, you let it sit out there for another month, it'll be about 75%, 80% broke down. Uh, but you can't let it get rained on because then it'll just it'll get leached back out into the soil and everything. So if your soil is contaminated, time really is of the essence. You need to hurry up, you need to take the topsoil off, and you need to treat it. Now, if you can't, if you don't have the, the time, the money, 
uh, and, and, and the ability to get the labor to take the topsoil off and pull, like totally pull it off, then what you can do is, you know, you can just till the soil, spray vegetable oil on, on the ground. The vegetable oil will bring the dioxins to the surface and let the sun deal with it. But if it's, if it rains, all that work and all that money was literally for nothing. Um, cause it'll just go further down into the ground. So, um, really, you know, the only method of soil washing is to, to take the topsoil off completely and put it under UV lamps after you have used the solvents, ethanol and olive oil to extract it, right? <clears throat> and then you're going to want to wash it several times and you can use those same, uh, solvents over and over again if you filter those solvents through uh, activated carbon right and then like with your ethanol you can redistill it you can continue to use the ethanol until it goes down to about 70 percent alcoholic content and then you know you can filter that with the activated carbon and then redistill it so that you can reuse it again and you're gonna to want to do successive washes of the soil and then and then UV radiate the soil. And then once you're done with the ethanol and once you're done with the oil, you're gonna to want to UV radiate uh, those solvents as well. Now there's also a fungus called white rot fungus. <clears throat> white rot fungus has been shown to break down dioxins and PCBs, but you know, you're gonna to have to get some expertise, you're gonna to have to Get a hold of that fungus first off, and then learn the expertise on how to use it. There's uh, another way to do it <clears throat> by planting sunflowers and by planting corn. Uh, uh, some researchers in Eastern Europe figured out that sunflowers and corn uh, do better at the roots, do much better than other plants at absorbing the dioxins and PCBs in the soil. Uh, so that's one of the methods that you can um, uh, rehabilitate your soil just just by using corn and sunflower oil, or su I'm sorry, uh, sun sunflowers. But you know, w once you harvest those plants, you got to figure out what to do with all that toxic material because the plants themselves will be toxic, and you've got to do something with it. And the treatment methods for that are very similar to, you know, what you would do for your food or for your, your soil. It requires washing it with the solvents and then treating it with UV radiation, essentially. Uh, advanced oxidation processes. That's essentially what's required there, um, unless the landfills will accept it. If, if they, but, you know, you, you need to make sure that they'll accept it uh, before you just give it to them. Now, uh, all, all of that information is what I personally have gathered over about three, four years of researching this subject. If you appreciate my content and you want to support my efforts, please feel free uh, to buy me a coffee. Um, you know, I put a lot of time and effort into this video and into bringing this information to you. I would definitely appreciate it if you uh, support me so that I can further help other people with this issue. Links to buy me a coffee will be in the description box below. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, especially if you think this information is relevant to them. Um, as always, don't forget, help out your neighbors.